This is an Onomi podcast. Daniel. Hey. Hey, bud. Devin, what's up? It's good to see you, man. Always. It's been a long and winding road for us. Mm-hmm. We are grown ass men now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We started as children. Yeah. Um, you're one of my oldest, longest friends. Yeah. Turn yeah. Up. Yeah. You as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool to know. I don't know. The, the older I get, it's like pretty cool when I still have friends that like I've known since I was 12. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I feel like those close friends are like almost like measuring sticks to, you know, where you kind of want to be. So like you you mentioned um, figuring out, you know, what goals are like, uh, I think communities, when you build community at a you know young age, it's like those shared goals, they continue to, or you continue to extrapolate them. As I grow, I'm looking over at, okay, my neighbor, what's he up to? What's he up to? Okay, I feel like I'm going down the right path, like type of thing. I, absolutely true. So, Although, yeah. do you find when you look over and see someone doing way, quote unquote, better than you? Yeah. Does it hurt you like it hurts me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure just there's a human instinct to be hurt, but uh, for me, I try to find um, inspiration. Good man. When when I see uh, cats, Good man. you know, being successful. Good man. Yeah. No, definitely. I, I try not. I try not be a bitter. We're humans. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that comparison, I mean, it can come in because we came up with a lot of people. Oh, and, Austin Butler, bro. <laughs> come on, man. He Dude, might win I, an Oscar, bro. He did his thing, bro. I'm yeah. so happy for him. He nailed that performance. Yo, so I went to watch Elvis, and and I, I was I was prepared for my own flawed humanness to make me feel all sorts of things in there because mm-hmm. I want to be at that level. Like this is something I've wanted my entire life. So I was prepared to feel all the ugly things, even though I love Austin. Yeah, yeah. And I was pleasantly surprised with my own humanity. I was watching it. It's like, he's great. He's killing it. Honestly, I was just like, oh, no one else could have played this role. Like, this was made for him. him, He worked his ass off on it, and he's crushing it. I literally was watching it just, like, so happy for him. Yes, And, like, I felt no, actually, jealousy or any of that. I was just like, wow, Austin. Good. You're you're ripping. He used he ripping, right? Dude, he used to just be abs on the set. He was like, and for those who don't know, Austin <laughs> Butler kind of got a start on Ned's <laughs> Um, but he, he was like an extra in a lot of these episodes. And like I think my my dad like got him his first kind of principal role. Oh like, wow. I think he was in like Cookies Tour or something like that. Amazing. Random, random yeah. factoid guys. <laughs> but uh but now, yeah, he's just he's elevated so crazily. I, Denzel Washington got him that job. Like it's it's so amazing to um, um, to see just how people's careers unfold. And like I say, I take it as inspiration to, okay, networking is a positive thing to do. Yeah, I, I feel you on that. I did feel inspired seeing it going like, this was this was his, like this was his journey to play Elvis like and to launch him in this way. Yeah. And I, I did feel actually inspiration from it, not jealousy. I felt like, yeah, cool. Like, get it, man. Like, mm-hmm, my mm-hmm. my journey's out there. Like, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. this is this is out there. Like, this is my guy, and he's up there on the big screen playing Elvis, like with Baz Luhrmann and Tom Hanks. It's wild. Yeah. It's beautiful. He did so good too. Yeah. What I really get upset at is when I see actors being very successful, and I can see that they're not like doing the work. Oh, oh, and it's just kind of dropped in their lap. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That that's that frustrates me. It just just in my own craft and whatever. Yeah. Austin, no, you can see it. Like he worked his ass off. Yes. That bro. that was inspiring. I was like, oh. No, I mean, oh, there were some shit. of those scenes. I'm like, yo, he dug deep for that. Yeah. You cannot discredit this <laughs> man like at all. No. Yo, amazing. Yeah, he did used to be called Abs on yes. set. Um, because he was like a golden god at like 13. Just ripped. Yeah. Just ripped. Just yeah. yoked. But Brad just Pitt too, yoked. though, bro. Like super, super chill. Like he wasn't a big braggadocious kind of nope. guy. He was a sweetie. Sweetie pie, humble, sweetie, Such but just, G, just like bro. golden god. Just, yeah, naturally. Yeah, golden boy. Abs, we used Good to guy. call him. There was one time uh, we were all like having a sleepover at uh, Kyle Swan's Bully Loomers, and, uh, and, <laughs> and Austin was asleep, and he was literally doing curls in his sleep. Damn. <laughs> and we said, no wonder he's so ripped. He's dreaming about working out. Hey. Dedication, man. Dedication. Dedication. Inspiration. Uh. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, Daniel. Yo. I want to I wanna go back to your uh, beginnings because you've done, you've done a lot in your life and I want to kind of like get into it. But mm-hmm. I want to ask you, what is your origin story? My origin story? Mm-hmm. Wow. I feel like a, a villain 
In no, Batman no, I could, you could be a hero. I could be? Yeah. If, oh, wait, live long enough to see yourself become a villain? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I die early, I'm a hero, guys. <laughs> no, um, okay, my origin story. Uh, I am from Clinton, Mississippi, small town west of Jackson, Mississippi, the capital, uh, for those of you who don't know. Uh, born to a teacher by trade. My mother was a teacher and my father was a truck driver. Um, but my father also, like, he loved the drums his whole life, so he had a huge background in music, and he put me in my... Um, older brother in like this group and we go around singing like gospel. So that was my first um, foray into the entertainment world. Um, and then from there, my brother started doing these like community plays. And so as far as my origin story in entertainment, um, my brother booked this role, 20th Century Fox film, and uh, we moved the family out from Mississippi. Like we lived in rural Mississippi, like the sticks, man. Uh, and I always, I always knew I enjoyed like entertaining, you know, being by the campfire, telling stories with like my my uncles and family members and stuff like that. Um, but uh, it, it wasn't until my brother booked that uh, role in My Dog Skip that the family moved out to Cali, and I just went out with him. Like I loved football and sports; that was all I was kind of really into, and of course, like scholastic stuff. Um, but I started going on some of his auditions when we got to California and I booked this role. It was like bad boy number two on, um, what, uh, ice cubes, uh, cube vision film Friday, Friday after next. So it was the third installment of that cult classic, also just epic movie in general. But, um, that was my like first like role. Uh, and then I just continued to kind of hammer away at the auditioning thing because I'm like, okay, you know, maybe this is something I can do instead of just taking those long rides, drives up to LA with my brother, like hour, hour and a half long drives and just sitting there watching him audition. I can start going in there. And, um, I got an agent and then booked, uh, like Ned's declassified like shortly after. So that was like my first starring role in like, what, maybe like a year, year and a half, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a bit of like a beginner's uh, luck opening into Ned's. I felt very like similar. It was my second pilot season when I booked it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And how, what is the role Ned's Declassified has played in your life? Oh, it's ruined me. It's ruined <laughs> me, guys. You could just get this epic start and then it's like, oh, wait, it's only downhill from here? Oh, God. <laughs> No, um, Yo, I feel that. I feel <laughs> that. No, I've had those moments where I felt like that. And I'm like, Daniel, you are so selfish. You, dude, your, your life is going so great. Mm. And you're, you, you have to be thankful. Let me just, just say that before I proceed. Um, your life could have started and like originated. You're talking about the origin story. Started in so many just uh, tough circumstances. It could have started under so many tough circumstances. So I'm thankful um, that, you know, just I had a, even a, a family as a platform to start out with because some people don't even have that uh, background. Some people born into the world without that luxury of just having a family, regardless of what your socioeconomic status uh, might have been, you know, or what you've been born into. Uh, and then just, you know, the upbringing, the, the people that I've met who had good intentions for me, I'm so thankful uh, for them on this journey because it could have gone so many so many different ways. Ned's Declassified played a positive role, I think, overall in my life, um, even if it was mainly just for inspiration. Um, it, it gained me a little bit of notoriety to then, like, segue to other shows in the inter entertainment world, like uh, what Zeke and Luther I started, like, two, I think, like, two years after that or something like that. So yeah. it was my second little starring role. But um, Ned's, man, uh, I got a chance to study a lot of the craft of filmmaking, too. Like, I used to just love going into the editor's room, going into the writer's room. And now that's like I do a lot of freelancing and like editing, uh, you know, cinematography, um, directing, all of that based off of this Ned show, you know? Yeah. Um, and just us having such a great showrunner, uh, Scott Fellows, he was such an incredible guy. And he always maintained in his adulthood this childlike um, ambition and belief in, in the ability to manifest these crazy things that you can imagine. He's, he's like, yo, just use your brain, think of it, and you can execute it. And I've always kind of operated like that, but I needed those, those couple guides from that Ned's Declassified family to help me solidify myself in the goals that I have today. Um, I love that, man. Yeah, so you cool. still love you still love filmmaking. You still love yes, yeah, absolutely the the crazy circus that is uh, pursuing entertainment. Entertainment, Dude, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and yeah, it it can be a crazy world, but if you surround yourself with good people, um, I think you can enjoy that journey. Yeah, so. I think yeah. I think we got very lucky, um, both in terms of the show that we ended up on 
and who our uh, families are, yeah. because obviously a lot's coming out right now about contemporaries of ours, child child actors who had very awful. different, yeah. awful experiences, mm -hmm. either because of their family or the shows they ended up on, mm -hmm. and usually both. Um, yeah. And I know that wasn't either of our experiences because Scott Fellows is like the man. He was like yeah. the best human to work for and work with, um, not just on an entertainment level, but on a personal level. He's such a good hearted man. He wanted what's best for all of us. He genuinely cared about all of us yeah. uh, and still does. I still get sweet messages from Scott oh, sometimes, yeah, great guy. man. Yeah, I love those messages. He well, still yeah, sends yeah. me hilarious little like, kind of making fun of me, but kind of like, hey, I love you and like, you got yeah, this, like, going, yeah. ah, what an angel. Yeah. And then, yeah, we got lucky with our families too, I think, because hearing about all this stuff um, with like Jeanette McCurdy and Allison Stoner and all this stuff, yeah. um, it 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 pains me to like learn about it. we were there it. like with them we, and like not really knowing. No, what we were there overlapping are. it. I mean, all the child actors like knew each other. We mm -hmm. all were at events together Some and Kids events. Choice Awards and all these things. We all overlapped in the industry. And like knowing that this is what they were kind of holding on and holding in and having oh, to and with survive. The smile? Oh, yeah. And with the smile that all of us child actors have to have, you get trained to like mm -hmm. be a mask, you get trained to be a caricature of yourself, you get trained to be a, a, a personality and maybe a little affected, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and they're having to do that while surviving some like really awful stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I commend them. Um... And I mean, you know, there are rough circumstances in everybody's life, regardless of the domain. It happens to be entertainment that we're discussing now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, life can throw a lot of obstacles at you, especially when you are on a quest or if you're within a community or family that is on a quest to achieve greatness in a certain field. Sometimes characters can be revealed um, and mm. it can bring out the worst in people on that um, goal or road to fame if that's what they're chasing or success whatever it might be um so try to try to stay surrounded by good people even now um i am trying to be at a point where even when i'm directing or filmmaking writing whatever i only want to do it with people that i enjoy being around that have good energy they're not so self-serving um they think of community first and just have the goal of effectively communicating and uh, creating successful projects that we can be pr proud of and have longevity in. So I think that's a great rule of thumb in life that it you only learn it as you get it wrong. You only learn it as you move forward is, wait a second, I had a weird feeling about this person from the very beginning. Like mm. listening to that first intuition on just energy, just do I feel good around this person? person does it seem like they have good character mm -hmm. and choosing to work with them based on that because man if that's not there you're just like asking for trouble you're flying through and past the red flags and saying no no but we can do it in spite of that and what you learn is what i've learned as i've gotten older is like no no you can't, you can't and it's only going to get worse that snowball effect happens for positive things and bad things. If you notice these red flags now, they're gonna get worse. And if you have some successful project with this person, now you're tied to them, even like, you know, financially, you're gonna have to stay in contact with them. It's best to just not even get that ball rolling. Yeah, it can be really hard, I think, in life and for us in entertainment, you want, we have these dreams that we want, we have these big visions that we want, and there's always people who are able to speak into that and say, hey, here's what I can do for you, and here's what here's what we can do together, and uh, if you're in entertainment, like, it's going to happen so often where you agree on a vision to work with someone and it just doesn't, it's not gonna work. It doesn't yeah, work out yeah, either because yeah. of who they are or just like the vision is is difficult. So at the very least, you wanna have a good, just human to human connection, connection with yeah. them while going through that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a pretty big obstacle to get over is that, oh wait, no, I just like don't feel good around this person. Yeah. Um, that's part of me doing this podcast with Anami. Oh yeah, just I, the, yeah. I like them. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs> I like them people. as people, so. That's what we're going. <laughs> well, that's off what we're of. doing. <laughs> nice. Well, this is a pretty cool set, man. I love hey, hey, it, thanks, man. You know, we're in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, for the listeners, you can't see the studio, but uh, 
There's don't a, tell them. Don't tell them. There's a picture no, of Hollywood behind us. This is actual Hollywood behind us. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, we're in my old backyard, remember? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yo, Dev had the coolest setup coming up on Ned's, man. <laughs> dude, just going up on the rooftop up there, you had the freaking pool, like where you can see the Hollywood sign, like, dude, just driving up. What is what is that main street? Beachwood Not, Canyon. Beachwood mm -hmm. Canyon, man. If you come to LA, just drive up Beachwood Canyon. It's so picturesque. And he was like right at the top of that hill. Yeah. And that's where we threw all the parties. <laughs> it's true. So. It's true. My family got this house like up near the Hollywood. I mean, it was, it was, I was living a dream. Like they got this house up on the Hollywood sign, like second season of Ned's. Um, this beautiful house with this backyard, with this view and this pool, looking at the Hollywood sign and over this canyon. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. And then, yeah, as I got like older into my teenage years, uh, yeah, we definitely had like like movie style, like high school parties. Oh, Project X, bro. bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Dude, and I used to have this super like, you know, reserved uh, Christian background. Uh, and, and, you know, I say I, I still hold a lot of my values. Yes. Whatnot, but um, we used to be super reserved. Um, <laughs> but those parties, man. Was yeah. I was I the devil? I mean, was I the I, one I who guess, broke yeah, you? Yeah, you must have been the devil, man. You must have been the devil <laughs> at, that, at that time. Um, and then I turned into a devil of sorts in my own, you know. <laughs> Forays out there, man. Party <laughs> animal, dude. I love good this. Times. We 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 did good. I mean, I think I think as a, I think the transition from adolescence to adulthood is, um, it's an important time, and part of it is rebelling. Oh, yeah. Part of it, you do need a healthy amount of risk in that time. You do need to break out of whatever boundaries or shell you're into. You do need to test the limits of of your conditioning. Like, yeah, I think it's an important, sure. and some people, you know, they, they go too far, they become, become addicted to things. Like, yeah. there is a version that takes you too far and you never get to bounce back from it. But I think transitioning, I think that time, a healthy amount of uh, oh, yeah. rebellious behavior is, is proper. You, you, you have to, man. Because uh, like you're saying, like, like I'm so blessed that the family I was birthed into, just love them so, so much. Um, my mother and father are just so incredible. Love speaking with them. They they have so much wisdom uh, to share, and they've always been so encouraging, even to this day, still, man. Um, but but yes, you will, and everyone just starts their life with a certain like kind of box around them, and it's a, usually a safety hedge, and those things are positive. But you do have to go and say, oh wait, okay, I can kind of push on these boundaries, and okay, maybe this corner is more of a circle, and oh wait, wait, maybe maybe I can actually open this thing up and actually step outside, and then observe from the outside my um, my surroundings or my enclosure, and realize that there are a lot of other people with a lot of different um, walks of life, like my. Um, my just favorite thing, first of all, moving from Mississippi to California was just seeing how different like people were like coming from, uh, you know, a southern kind of or southern roots, you know, southern and rural. So I wasn't seeing too many people to this huge metropolis, Los Angeles and all these people who kind of look different, different shades, uh, different hairstyles, you know, piercings. Uh, like it was all very interesting, but it showed me that I could have been born as any of these people. And uh, that inspired me to do a lot of, you know, studying abroad and stuff. I did uh, a study abroad in Spain, got to meet all the different cultures there and just see what those walks of life were. Did uh, the same thing in Berlin, went and just explored, man, to kind of just see what does the world have to offer. Um, yeah, there, there's so there's so many walks of life and we could have been anybody. And that's something that I just kind of live by. And so I try to treat everyone um, with just acceptance because... Hey, we're all just people trying to survive. I love, I love that. I mean, I think there's a reason um, uh, most big cities vote in a certain way towards kind of being open and towards helping people. And it's because mm -hmm. when you live in a big city, you are exposed to all these different diverse cultures and backgrounds background, and come froms. And you realize these things. You go, oh, we're all like this different, but we all live in the city and we all kind of have similar values on a base level of like, ah, we all just want to make it through the best we can. So mm -hmm. let me try and like help the overall community. I think yeah. it's a real thing. And LA is a blessing for that. LA is one of the biggest, most diverse cities in the world. Oh yeah. It's um, right. Yeah. Uh, so I love that you traveled. I love that you went out and saw the world. I think it's really important to not stay in a bubble in your life. I think right. it's really valuable. Um, and we can have these experiences that that change us. And 
in like ancient cultures, there's things called like rites of passage, right? There's mm. there's actual like a ritual that you go through to up level you, to mark you from boy to man, to give you the res new responsibilities, to mature you. There were like these ritualized practices within you know communities. different communities. We kind of don't have those anymore. They're not as clear. College, kind of, yeah. maybe travel. I don't know. I think it's defined differently for all of us. So, for you, what do you? What have been your rites of passage? Like, what do you think the experiences are for you that like really shifted things? Hmm. What to just the transition into adulthood? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and to becoming more you. Yeah. See, and cer certain cultures still observe things. Definitely. Like, what the the Latin culture has their quinceañeras. Yeah. It's like okay, you're definitely bar mitzvah, doing your bar mitzvah, for sure. You know that whole thing. Um. Man, uh, American culture, they have kind of watered down a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Getting I mean, drunk I guess, in college. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I was going to say, like, school is kind of our um, kind of rites of passage, just making the grade and, um, you know, finding yourself established in that kind of way. But it is a little lackluster. Yeah, um, and you went back to school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, well, you mean like the college thing? Yeah, you, yeah went, okay. you went and did college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I went to Cal State Long Beach, um, got my uh, degree in, uh, bachelor's degree in linguistics. So that was awesome. And what age, you went back like at like 23, right? Think, or 22, yeah, yeah, right? I took a little bit of a break off yeah. and then was like, you know what, I want to I wanna do this. I always enjoyed um, the scholastic ventures and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to go back and just show myself I can do it just really as just follow through, man. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, you do the college thing, you don't even end up getting a job in that field and whatnot. Um, but I, I felt in choosing linguistics, you know, and, and I'm, I'm more a syntax grammar type guy more than anything, but uh, it allowed me to communicate more effectively with people and um, be concise with direction that I want to, you know, give to people. Um, so it's, it's helped me as a director, I feel. And then when I'm just communicating with, uh, team members on, on projects, even in the editing room, I can be very, you know, specific to get them, you know, the exact direction that I saw when I wrote the script or whatever. So I, I love that background, but rites of passage, uh, college was one because you're going to feel like you want to quit. Like, absolutely. But even that just high school for a lot of people, like whatever that grade is, you're trying to go, just having something in front of you to say, um, if I can just get through this everything's going to be great. But of course, there's always the next thing. You open the freaking window and there's all this, there's this new thing. Okay, now just adulthood and figuring life out with the knowledge now that college isn't the answer. You know, it's not the end all be all. So hmm. in adulthood, you know, outside of the school system that we've been um, indoctrinated within, you will realize that there are some other rites of passage that you uh, have to deal with. And I mean, bill paying, you know, the, <laughs> the first time you have to call the doctor without your mom, you know. Oh, scary, scary moment. Scary moment. Scary man. moment. Uh, those, are, those are rites of passage. And some people <laughs> have them at very early, you know, ages. Um, uh, you know, so I feel mildly sheltered in that way. Yeah. Because some people, like my, my young lady, the young lady that I'm with, she, um, she grew up as a foster uh, youth. And a lot of those... Um, a lot of those things that I took for granted, you know, I'm like, okay, this rite of passage for me started way later. She had to go ahead and figure it out now because there was not a um, familial member there to kind of show her and guide her, or she had to meet new people that were her um, mentors or parental figures and things mm -hmm. like that. So I do feel so blessed that like, I was sheltered from certain things like that. Like my parents just took care of certain things because I was the kid. But then I do feel jealous of the kids who like, with simple things like that, like calling the doctor, like that gives me anxiety. And <laughs> it's only because I didn't do it for 20 years or whatever. But like, you can get up and speak in front of a crowd of a thousand people. Yes, easy. I yeah. could get up and speak in front of a stadium of people and I'm fine because I'm like trained in that. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love attention. Um, but, <laughs> but, but like calling the doc those simple kind of just like taking care of your life practices that our parents handled. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of the kids who like had to do it since they were 13. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is, you know. Yeah, it for sure is. But man, uh, yeah, that rites of passage one, that's a, that's a real, um, that's a real question, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, especially as a, as a United States citizen. I, like, I, I know we don't have- Voting, it's like, okay, now you can do this. Sure. 
all we have is just like restrictions that get removed slowly but surely. Yeah, you can vote, you can, <laughs> you can go drink. to war, yeah, you, you can drink, yeah. you can rent a car. Dang. Dang, the rite life. of passage. The Boom, life. there you go. You're living the dream, man. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> what does, I think here's another undefined thing in our culture. What does being an adult mean to you? Ooh, being an adult. Mm-hmm. Being an adult means there are consequences for your actions. Um, and, you know, you might find that in childhood, too. But as an adult, it's like, yeah, literally, you are the representative of your unit of person. And, you know, if you uh, make a mistake, sorry, there's no one here to forgive you um, or to necessarily help you through that. That would be a luxury if they do. Um, and you have to get up and decide what you want to prioritize every day. Um, you no longer have school or your the curriculum they set out for you to define what your success is or the right thing to do is. So you have to get up every day and based off of your past experiences, figure out what is beneficial to you, what is not beneficial, what is worth your time, what is not, what is going to uh, cause you harm and you know what will be beneficial to you in the long run. You have to make those decisions and uh, face the consequences for making those mistakes. It, it sounds a little drab, but that that's kind of adulthood in my book. Um, and I, you, can, you can also make your money and spend it how you want to, but like great power comes great responsibility. I feel that, man. That is the the uh, power and the terror of, of growing up and being an adult is it's all on you now and uh, you can only avoid the problems in your life for so long until they just start ruining your life and you have to confront them. Have to. Because it's no one is going to save you. No one's going to do it for you. No one's going to call the doctor if you have something wrong with you. Yeah, like, yeah. you have to do it. And I, I definitely think the kid in me uh, still has instincts sometimes to, like, hide from problems or mm -hmm. avoid problems. And yeah, the adult in me is like, well. Address it, address it now. Confront it as worse. soon as possible, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, this, is a, this is a vulgar way of, of stating this, but, but <laughs> I, I have to, this is something, I, this is how I framed it for myself. But I had this job where I was um, a traveling scarf salesman for a while. And uh, yeah, it was a strange job. I live a strange life, Daniel. Hey. Um, <laughs> while pursuing acting, I'm a traveling scarf salesman. But I would go on these uh, sales trips. I would literally fly with suitcases full of scarves to go to craft shows and set up the scarves and sell them for the company I worked for. And it was a lot of work and it, it was a lot of using my, my personality. Like I had to interact each sale is one on one. Nothing is selling itself. I have mm. to make each sale for like 12 hours a day in these big convention centers. Um, mm. And what I learned while doing these is every time I showed up to one of these trips to this city and I need to wake up at 6 a.m. and I know I'm going to go sell for 12 hours. And what I ultimately want to do is be an actor. So this isn't even my life. Mm. All these all these voices in my head. But I have to do this. This is my job. This is how I'm going to pay my rent. Yeah. Um, what came up in me is what I call um, the little bitch in me. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> uh, and I think it's good to be in situations where your inner little bitch comes up uh -huh. and you have to power through <laughs> because every time it came up, like there's no, the little bitch would come up loud in me on oh, these man. sales trips. And yeah. like, I would literally just want to stay in the hotel and not go. But if I do that, like I am not an adult. I am a child if I don't go. <laughs> like there's no yeah. option. I have yeah. to go. This is what I'm here to do. I'm spending company Ooh. money, all this stuff. So I have to go do this. I have yeah. to confront or move around or move through my little bitch. Get out of my way, little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm every do this. And, and I call it a little bitch because really, <laughs> like what was really coming up in me was just like, no, like, Dang. I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm but tired. Why? But I'm an actor. I don't want to do this. Dude. But like, I got bills to pay, man. like you need this money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, at the, and this would happen every craft show. I'd start the weekend, full little bitch. Yeah. And then by the end of it, I would succeed. I'd make money. I'd make money for the company. I'd interact with a lot of people in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. And, and getting through that at the end of it, being successful, dude, it's, I feel 
felt it starting to make me a more effective man, a more effective adult yeah. was like these experiences that bring up your little bitch, that yeah. bring up the thing in you that's like, no, Dang. I don't want to do that that's because rough. I don't want to do that. Dude, and do I really have to? Yeah. <laughs> what are consequences? <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, well, I'm glad you triumphed over that. And that's so true. I mean, the way you described it is so relatable, bro. Like, that's that's literally it. I, I've definitely had a couple gigs where I'm like, I do not want to. Like, why do I have to participate in this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> is this what life is? Like, like, is this what we're here for? To make a couple bucks so that we can get ready for the next opportunity to, you know, snuff out our little bitch inside? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that, yeah. that's adulthood is what it, like, that is a part of the process of becoming an adult. It's that thing you said of, it is all on you now. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I, and I do understand as a, as a younger person, as an adolescent, maybe I saw this look in every adult's eye, this, this little cold, the opposite of a twinkle. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Just this little look. And now I get why there's so many aspects of, of adult life that, of course you don't want to do. Yeah, I'm here because I have to be. Yeah. Not cause, yeah. Yeah, of course you don't want to like whatever, do the deep clean of your house or oh, organize yeah. the dishes, junk drawer, like, do the dishes every yeah. day. Like, every single day. They're dirty again? Bro, I, you know what? <laughs> actually, here was my, this is not a rite of rat passage, but okay. when I realized I was an adult, I think, and, and this is just one mild uh, side, but it was when... I decided, like I, I actively decided, and I was proud of myself for saying, the food is not finished, the meal is not finished until you have washed every dish. <laughs> and, and like, like I, and I took pride in that. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna cook this food. Before I even eat, I'm gonna wash every freaking dish I used. And I was proud of that. And I was like, as a child, I never would have been proud of, some, of something so mundane. But no, I love it. that is a victory in adult. adulthood yeah. when you finally make the choice to be responsible for that. Yeah. Like, I think, I think, I think childhood is maybe built on these like bigger things, like mm. built on, I booked Ned's or, I mean, that's a rare one, but like yeah. maybe it's, I got the, I kissed the girl. Like it's yeah. built on these bigger moments. I do think most of the success in adulthood is built on those moments. Yeah. The seemingly mundane, but where you like fully embrace and integrate your own responsibility for your yes. life. I, I know I'm uh, operating effectively like that. Those are things that I appreciate now. Okay, that, that leads me to a different line of questioning, which is, I think we all have uh, things in our life, let's call them vices. We have things in our life that we use to avoid those feelings or numb them or escape them mm -hmm. or just distract ourselves from, from that responsibility we're feeling, which can turn into feeling overwhelmed, right? Like, yeah. we have these things. Um, what are your what are your vices that help you get through the day? My vices, I mean, they're the typical American vices like alcoholism. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, actually, I do. I, I don't drink as much. That was more like a yeah. I've been meaning to talk to you. High school and no, I'm just, oh, I'm just kidding. To talk to you. Hey, just we, we gotta figure this out. I'm just kidding. Intervention. Um, <laughs> that dude. this isn't a podcast. This <laughs> right. is an intervention. Bro. You've been a problem. <laughs> right. It's like we're fixing this today. <laughs> So you guys are my best friends, I guess. All yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. Um, my vices, my vices, man. I mean, I mean, I'll share my like. Yeah. Uh, weed is one for me, man. Oh, it's, dude, it's it, it's but so it's easy. It's a vice and a friend. I, I, that's the heart. Those this are the those are the one. trickiest this vices. No, yeah. and no, and honestly, that's that's a good response because most of our vices are that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. of course, they're not just objectively wrong for us. They do something for us. It's why we have them. Yeah. It's why I don't fully like the term vice, but it's just the best word I have and, for and it. But, but as an adult, you have to learn how to say, hey, friends, I can't hang out today. Yo. <laughs> yo. So, yo, weed can be a friend, but, yo, you know, I'm you can't trying hang to, out I'm every trying day, to, I'm trying to tell weed right now. Like, I, <laughs> yo, bro, like, we've been hanging out a lot, but, like, I'm an adult. I got, like, responsibility. Yeah, man. Sorry. And especially in the entertainment field, especially in a creative field, because mm -hmm. I can smoke weed and be fully productive. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can, Absolutely. I can no do heavy that. machinery here. No, I can do that and literally be doing my jobs, yeah. like, and be succeeding in my life. Yeah. However, yeah, I have found... Uh, I, I know I need to take a break on it when it, it becomes this weird little hell of 
oh, I'm sober, I have the urge to smoke, mm -hmm. so I smoke and I enjoy the process of smoking, and then I'm high and I don't wanna be high. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, when yeah. that's happening consistently, I go, oh, I've like broke myself. I just need yeah. to stop because no, this is the wrong dynamic for my life. I agree. I agree, man. And like like smoking, I haven't really done in a while. Like edibles has sure, been like my sure. thing. So I'll like do those like bef before I go to sleep or some crap sure. like that. Um, but I've slowed down on that as well, man. Um, but it... I have had these moments, especially with, with the smoking, because that's a whole act. Like, you got to sit there, you know, roll. You got to freaking uh, set aside this time. Go find a balcony. That's, this could be cigarettes or weed or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so the reason I stopped smoking was just even just that. Just the time of my it? time to do a thing when I could be being productive, uh, you know, with that same amount of time. And also, it's just having that dopamine release and feeling, okay, things are fine. Or I can hang out with these people because we're all having a good time. But then, you know, you, you sit back and you're like, wait, would I hang out with these people if I were not smoking? Mm. You know, so I'm yeah. like, maybe, maybe not everyone is worth relating to or being, oh, hey, we're all the same, like all of that. Uh, riff raff. We can all just sit here and waste each other's time. Like, <laughs> no, I want to go and be productive. And sometimes backing off of your friend weed is the right thing to do. Yeah. Especially if you want to be an adult. Now, there are times once it's no longer like a recreational thing or where you're um, you're rewarding yourself. And you're just doing it every day. It's like the reward is gone. It's like being on a roller coaster. I don't care how high that roller coaster is. It could be way up here over the Hollywood Hills. If it's just up here doing this the Going whole time. Going straight the whole time. That's, that's not a fun ride. No hills, know? no loops. You need to be down here a little bit, <laughs> then go up and do, you know, one of these. Like, But if it's just weed every day. I love this analogy. Yeah. I love that. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think all these things, like, you have to balance in your adult life and in, I guess, your adolescent life is like, these things that provide you that instant dopamine, that instant gratification, and delaying it for some bigger vision for your life and bigger wants for your life. And I think, yeah, weed for me can sometimes be in accordance with the bigger things I'm working mm -hmm. towards. Sometimes it's balanced. And sometimes I'm on a roller coaster just going straight just and going I'm straight. just making myself stuck. Yeah, why am I up here? That yeah. Is, it's not even thrilling. Uh, do so you yeah, do you nice. have a phone? Do you have an issue with phone oh, scrolling? Oh, vice! I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that now that's a huge vice, dude. Man. Me These too. Phones are All out of, of hand, us, dude. Out of hand. And I could just, scroll for so long. So unfortunate. <laughs> and I'm like, what else would I rather be doing? But also weed and the scroll. Oh, you're oh. screwed, man. Yeah, you're done. there's a whole you're day. Done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no oh, job? Man. Come oh, on. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no yeah, real sure. job to show up to? Bruh. <laughs> man. Yeah, guys, put the phones down. Just put the phones down. It's hard, down. man. It's hard. TikTok is brutal because because there's also stuff on there that's like good. Oh, yeah, so you can lie to yourself and say, I'm learning. <laughs> Don't judge me. Uh, no, you're, you're not learning anything. Like, uh. yes. But you know what? Honestly, YouTube for me on a desktop or laptop, I can go into these just... You know, I'm studying all this stuff. I'm learning about 1876 and I'm learning about the 1400s and all this crap like in between my editing session. And I'm like, oh, my editing timeline isn't done because I keep going over here to study these things. And I'm learning about chemistry and biology <laughs> and all this stuff that I'll never apply in my life. So <laughs> it's, yeah, vice, information can be a vice uh, for me. So I, I will say that. That's amazing. I've been talking about this with a, with a friend of mine that, that a part of maturing and a part of becoming an effective you, an effective adult, is there is so much information in our lives now. We have access to so much noise. Noise, yeah. Ha, ha, learning how to determine what is noise and what is signal, what is what is um, connection for you. And for each of us, it's going to be different. And chemistry, different times, yeah. chemistry for some people, learning that will be applicable based on what they do in their life. Mm -hmm. But you could be learning something valuable, but if it's not applicable to the life that you're creating, how valuable is it to how valuable you? Is it? Yeah, I've been trying to cut out things that that aren't for me. It's like, mm. ah, that's awesome for some people, but what is it that I'm obsessed with? What is it that mm. I, so one of those things is filmmaking now. So as, mm. as long as, sometimes it's just, you know, uh, boredom time, but as long as I'm watching some like I don't know, video essay on like filmmaking or feel, something yeah. on cinematography. I'm at least in the realm that I'm in. 
I'm yeah. in the realm that I'm building and aspiring to. Yeah, and so you can actually apply it. Like you said, applicable. Like I can literally go and, um, you know, enhance my resume because I show up on set and I'm able to do this or I have the knowledge of this uh, aspect of my craft. So, yes, that that's positive. And I, I must, I guess, give myself a little bit of grace. I do spend a lot of time you know, on YouTube searching kind of that stuff that yeah. is applicable. But when you, those tangents are always sitting waiting like, oh yeah, I can get them, I can get them. I know, that's the thing is you have to use these these pieces of technology to get to the information that's like good for you. Yeah. But oh man, you're just right on the edge of going down a rabbit hole mm -hmm. of cat videos and, and being there for four days and then like realizing like, oh no, I've, I've OD'd on cat videos. Bro, yeah. I gotta go to rehab. <laughs> Dude, facts man, facts. Um, all right, I want to define or explore another. Um, sometimes I think for people with all this noise, it's hard to know what to aim at being. Um, so what does being a good person mean to you? What does being a good man mean to you? What does being a good you mean to you? Like, w what is that? What are What is your ideal? Hmm. What are the priorities? What are the priorities? You know what? I, I think a lot of that is based off of, you know, my, my upbringing. Um, so I think as a kid, it's usually your parents kind of telling you like, yes and no, you do mm -hmm. the right thing. They're like, yay. And you do the wrong thing. No, no, no. So um, I'm sure a lot of that is based in, in them and uh, their um, perspectives. But for me, being a good person, uh, it is involves the community around me i think mostly like as long as i'm not leaving some huge footprint or negative footprint in the lives of people around me um i think it, you know you, you can you can kind of do as you will you can kind of um grab life by the horns and uh let it take you where you want to go just as long as i'm not hurting anyone around me or infringing upon their pursuit of happiness if you want to go into mm -hmm. you know, American ideals uh, then that to me is being a good uh, good person I love that so the way that you find the feedback of because there's a lot of noise like we said good or bad it's hard to define and for each person that's different so the way you feel the feedback is based on your impact in the people around you yeah yeah I think I think I'm community oriented in that way um, but then let's let's maybe narrow it down to as an individual what makes me feel like a, a good man um, or person uh, I, I think of like quotes from my father um, he always tells me or would tell me um, turn your waiting time into productive time hmm. so I feel like my my efforts, you know, towards productivity in times where I could rest, uh, choosing to be productive makes me feel like I'm a, a good person hmm. uh, in myself, mm -hmm. you know, based off of the character that my, you know, father has tried to implement into me. And, you know, the, just the culture that he grew up in. And there's nothing wrong with productivity. It's also part of being an adult. So feeling like I am embodying what it means to be an adult makes me feel like a a good man and mm. not harming others in the process of doing that mm. yeah yeah that works learning too i feel like humans are here to kind of learn if, if there's any one thing that uh humans and i'm not gonna say any one thing because i'm generalizing but um i think learning uh being able to be a better you tomorrow based off of what you chose to um internalize today I think um, makes me at least feel like I am a, uh, a good, good person just because I'm continuing to grow. From what I've seen in you our entire lives is you have prioritized or not even prioritized. I feel like you just gravitate towards learning. Like you've always been jumping into different subjects and uh, even through adulthood. Like, I mean, first of all, you went back to college, which... I did not. <laughs> I, not you have to. I stayed acting, babies. I stayed in my little <laughs> entertainment success bubble that popped. Um, really? No, no. <laughs> but, uh, it's going to reemerge. Yes, emerging yes. now. No, look, it's I fine. It's emerging now. But, um, but I did see you like take on a lot of different aspects of learning, not only linguistics, but like finance. Mm. Uh, I know you got into yeah. that whole world, which I, still frightens me. Um, yeah. I still kind of stay on the outside of it. Trading, a little bit of trading. I've had, <laughs> I had, I've had my successes and my failures. <laughs> I don't know. That's life. That's part of being an adult, guys. 
Uh, do you have any? Uh, do you have any financial advice for anyone? Financial advice? None that works, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I got some. <laughs> you know, when it's good, it's good, man. Yeah. But when it's bad, hey, it can get bad. Um, financial advice? No, no. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm kidding a little bit. Um, <laughs> financial advice? Yeah. Have you learned anything about your personal finance that, like, yeah, you could bubble down, boil down? Dude. Put it, write it, write it down. Put it in a spreadsheet. There's budgets sound so scary to people. Yeah, a budget is literally just a ledger of these um, these items that you know you're gonna have to pay for, and then a also included in that is the income that you have coming in. All right, so you just gotta know what's coming to you, what's automatically going out, and as long as everything is itemized. You can be fine. America is a good place for you if you know the money that you've made and the money that you are going to spend. Mm. Just keep track of it, guys, and don't mm. be afraid of it. That, that oh, budgeting, that sounds like it's so much to do. No, just open up an Excel spreadsheet or don't. You could just you write, it write it down it. manually. Yeah. How, what, however, you, you just have to keep track of things, and that's a, also a part of being an adult, keeping track of, well, it's ownership, I guess, but knowing what you own, knowing what you owe, and just keeping that that balance, you know? If, mm. if, 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 if you say, oh, I wanna buy these things, but I only have this income, and I'm gonna go into the negative, once you start seeing a negative number, you cannot buy those things, <laughs> you know? So, and, and you wanna have a surplus, so limit those things that you are purchasing, you know? I could try to give you some tips on, you know, how to be a successful trader, but not everyone has that option to yeah. even enter that uh, No, I think that's that awesome. Uh, I'm definitely scared of budgeting, so I'll, I'll listen to you. But, but I mean, <laughs> it's like, hey, just run the numbers. You yeah. owe it to yourself. Yeah, because it does then give you a clear picture of things. Yes. And then from there, you can choose. From there, you can adjust. <laughs> you can decide, ooh, I need to be hitting some things harder or hitting some things less. Or it's I don't true. care. I'm going into debt. At least right. know what is happening. You know, right. I think that's the, the main thing. I think that's great. I like that you said you could kind of apply that to kind of adulthood in general, like not just money. You could apply like because I think a lot of people have a hard time saying no to things in their life. So they say yes to all these things. But you do have to take a real accounting of your own capacity, not just with money. What is your capacity to show up for others, to show up mm. for yourself, to show up for your um, big vision dreams or life dreams, mm. but then also your mundane have to do show up yep. for these things. And you do need to have a personal accounting of like, no, yes. I can't say yes to this project to helping my friend with this thing yes. because I have shit going on yes. that I need to address. Yes. I can't go on that trip. Why? Because it's not allocated in the budget. So you're saying no with all of you. Once you have that financial aspect of yourself written down, at least for that month or, you know, that week or that year, you know that this no is a real no. And this yes is a real yes when I tell someone that I can show up for them. Yeah. Versus there having to be a surprise later. Like nothing's a surprise if everything's accounted for. Write it down. Be aware of what's happening. Yeah. Now, now I live a weird life because I'm in entertainment and I've been a child actor my whole life. Uh, uh, uh. You're saying I can't just be Peter Pan forever and fly by the seat of my pants and have it all work out. No, well, it's the have it all work out part. Mm, of okay, okay, but you okay. You could be Peter Pan. It's just, okay, I don't know if it's work. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, I see, I see, I see what you're getting out here. Um, so man. you're saying I should continue to be Peter Pan? Yes, that's, that's what I walked away with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, life, life hit me really hard. Um, I talked about it on this little like TikTok with Anami, but like adulthood hit me really hard when I ran out of money. Mm. I like straight up ran out of money. I was not budgeting. That's the rite of passage right there, though. For real. It, no, no, I've, I've had that. And it's like, you know, and life has been so forgiving to me because it's like running out of money. You know, yeah, I ran out of money. But it, just once I realized that, hey, oh, there are heavy consequences for you if to you continue. getting this wrong. Yeah. yeah. If you get this all the way wrong, you're done. You didn't got it wrong, bro. But you might have a residual that's going to hit here in a little bit so you can scrape by. But you have to do something because you don't have the money. Yeah, dude, I had these I had these. A serious, I mean, my whole life I was, I worked in TV and film and no matter how low my savings got, I would always book again. So I that wasn't was being, yeah. so I wasn't being totally unreasonable, unreasonable. It was based on my entire life's experience was like, 
it's all good. The savings are getting low, but I'll book something. I'll uh-huh. book something. I'll book something. Especially based I'll on book my something. trajectory. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'll book, I'll book, I'll book. And then I didn't. And then some bills hit that I did not see coming. And all of a sudden it was like, I have no money. I need two jobs yesterday. <laughs> oh, and but that was a rite of passage because what I did was I went and got two jobs immediately. Like yes, it was like, it'll do it. It was like, oh, and thank God, dude, I saw... I saw how easy it is for people to really slip into some a, a very awful circumstance that's hard to get out of. Like, thank God I had safety net. Like there yeah. were people, if I was absolutely destitute, if I absolutely needed rent covered, there are people in my life I could call. Yeah. Cool. Um, I tried to not lean on anyone because I was like, ooh, this is like real feedback in my life. Like I need to figure this out yeah. responsibly and yeah. I need to pull back from this. Um, but thank God, like I could call my mom if I needed help. Yeah, thank yeah. God I have that woman. But I saw like, whoa, some people don't have a mom. Some people don't have yeah. a, a family, who anyone in their family that they can call or a friend. Yeah. And if this moment happened to them, this could get real dark very well, quickly. Yeah, like I saw it, dude, it. my account was done. My account was fucking empty. Frightening. I, I fumbled the bag, as they say. It'd be like that. I fumbled the it, bag, but it was a rite of like passage. That. Yes. I started to it. grow up fast. I started <laughs> yeah. to go, ooh, Devin. Oh, yeah, and when the humility sets in, sets oh, in you know, you get it's to be good. humble. And it, yeah, it does feel good on that other side of it. Just like we talked about these mundane like things like washing the dishes every day makes me feel good. When you choose to, hey, let me humble myself, go get these jobs that I otherwise would have said no to, it feels good. Good. Yeah, I had I had one of those mundane victories like during this time when I was like working myself back into some kind of stability, uh, working these jobs and had a long day at work at the shop I was working at. And I I just felt like after work, like I just want to go like smoke weed and fuck off. Right. Like I just want to like shut it all down and whatever. And instead, I went to the grocery store, got all my food for the week. Uh, I went and worked out. And then I went home and I did laundry like after my full day of work. And after that night, I literally felt like so good about myself. I had embraced my own responsibility and adulthood. I was like, no, I didn't just go watch TV. And because I'm tired from work, I went and did things that matter to me, which is like setting up the rest of my week success. It's going to benefit you in the long run. I didn't do it. Um, for my now self, I did it for my future self. And that this big rest period that I could have had, oh yeah, nine hours of doing nothing. Now on that one day, that nine hours, I've been able to spread it out. So I'm gonna have a little bit of recreation throughout the, the week. The rest of the week, absolutely. That postponed gratification, man. Absolutely, it's a beautiful thing. I, I remember like, like laying in my bed that night, like I just learned something about life. Like, and it's such a mundane thing. Like, that's not a victory to anyone. Like, it's very basic. I went to work, I worked out, I went, got groceries for myself, and I did my laundry. Like, these are seemingly from anyone from the outside, it's like, yeah, you lived life. Cool, man. You like showed up for your life. But for me, it was like, oh, I can be an adult. Yes, yeah, success. Yeah. Yeah. You're reminding yourself, yeah, because because there there are there still do come those times where it's like, oh shoot, I overextended myself. Oh, I'm a terrible adult. Oh, I feel horrible. <laughs> You know, and then when you get back on track, it's like, I'll take my wins where I get them. You yeah. know, a win is a win. I got my ass kicked this year by a nice, I, I messed I messed something up. Um, don't don't ever do this, everyone. Don't ever do this. I, um, I didn't realize I did it because the light never came on and I kind of lost track of the miles I was at on my car. But I, <sighs> I let my car run out of oil. Oh, oil? Yep. Dang. And what that does is it literally kills your engine. Your engine is now dead. It's dead. It's dead and there's no fixing it. So either you get a new car or you replace your engine or da, 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 da. And yeah, uh, that was, that was enough. No matter what happens in your adult life, no matter how much success you have, these moments are going to show up again and again. And you're going to go, oh yeah, I still, I still get it wrong. Um, Yeah. yeah, that was a painful one. I mean, it happens, but yeah, I mean, yeah, guys, you know, check your oil. (laughs) Or get an electric car. Do, do electric cars still have oil? They might. I mean, if they got gears. But yeah, uh, anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Do electric? Do you have an electric car? No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I check my oil every day, guys. Uh, not every day. Yeah. But you know, you just got the little dipstick. You pull it out and you do. I know. Oil. I lost track of it and it all went south, man. I I, I killed my car, so I replaced the engine. Good times. Yeah. I see, said my adulting. dad just yells at me that about that all the time. Like he'll just call me randomly. You check your oil. <laughs> I, I told you about this, man. You know. So I'm like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> So that, that's the only reason my car hasn't run out of oil. 
Yeah. So thanks to him. Yeah, this is good. This is good. How is your dad? He's good, man. He's doing well. He was just in Mississippi kind of um, fixing up on the house back there. Okay. Yeah, chopping down a bunch of trees and stuff. Yeah. Our families were intricately linked from Ned's for a long time. We all live, like, our fa being child actors, like, our parents have to live that life with us. So yeah. that's yeah. a crazy thing is yeah. we all have these connections. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, it was good times. I love that you said it when I brought up Ned's. This is a real weird aspect to the child actor thing. Like, even if... You have a positive experience, which you and I did. We, we had a pretty positive experience within the industry. But there is a weird thing about hitting that level of social success mm -hmm. um, and professional success at that age. Your second, my second pilot season, like you're a year into acting. It does do a weird thing for your expectations of the world as you become an adult. Yeah. It, 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 that has been one of my personal struggles that that some people who are going through much different shit might be like yeah boohoo mm -hmm. but that has been a weird thing is my my awareness is hardwired for like this success that i had as a kid yeah, and i'm yeah, constantly yeah, yeah. looking for it to still yeah. be around still be around and reappears like hey where you at no hold yeah, on no. yeah no matter <laughs> how much humbling and no matter how much work I do to learn about life and get in the moment, like my awareness is hardwired for that, to expect that success. Yeah. And uh, anytime it's not around, I, I hurt a little bit. Man, and it's such a weird thing, because what even is that? Like, TV's only been around X amount of years, you know? And our whole life is based around this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this technology that is, you know, fairly new, uh, you know, uh, I know, aspect of humanity. but as a kid, you're, you're not, it's not just money. Cause as a kid, you don't have a great concept of money, but even though you are getting paid, it's not money. Yeah. You are getting feedback from adults in the world that like you matter, you're valuable, Validation, you're, yeah. you're, you're validated. Yeah. Like you are this yeah. success whatever that means you are successful yeah eyes on you adults talking to you like you're a, a peer adult. yeah exactly. it's a strange thing that it does to a kid i get why so many child yeah. stars burn out yeah. turn to weird uh, things like Cope me coping mechanism. coping mechanisms yeah. uh, or run away from it entirely like yeah. i get it it's a weird yeah. experience that it, only it, it really us is. know about and you're just you're just kind of like disoriented like you know because I, I stayed in public school about as long as i kind of could i know but still, that's a great thing i mean yeah i i enjoyed it um but yeah it, it's it's weird because you feel this sense of distinction amongst these peers that you would be with but you're not because you're doing this thing and you're being congratulated for it and um it it makes it weird to then try and assimilate back into what is right uh or or yeah yeah what your peers are doing even when you do start to do it you're like am i doing this exactly right am i am i being an effective person because i don't have all these people sending me this praise and validation am i doing it right it's it's just always this big kind of question out there but i i think i think we're doing all right we're doing all right, doing all right. um how do you Let's define or explore another term. Go ahead. I know how we defined it as kids, I'm pretty sure, but how do you define success now? Okay. Ooh. What does that look like for you now? Wow. Yeah, interesting. As an adult, um, and even just outside of the entertainment thing, because you yeah. know, I, I consider myself a fairly multifaceted yeah, person. Yeah, you um, are. Success. Hmm. Like, like we said, it's, it is a just journey. It's more of a journey instead of like a destination. Cause mm. once you set that destination, you're going to reach it and then you're going to want way more. It's like, why even set that, um, destination? I, I don't want to put limits or boundaries. So success for me is being able to be fulfilled by the things, uh, that add to my, Ooh, Ah, oh, this is tough. <laughs> to be fulfilled by the things that bring me resources, mm. okay? Resources mm. and um, security, mm. all right? I, I mm. just want to be fulfilled by it because if I am attaining resources and security by something that doesn't fulfill me, then it's not really success. 
Um, so I'm still taking, you know, jobs when I do my freelancing work where I do work with people that maybe I don't want to. So I don't consider myself completely successful. But in those moments where I do get to choose the team that I'm working with, uh, manifest great uh, projects that I feel um, add to my fulfillment in life uh, and it, you know, generates resources, revenue for me. That's that that is success for me. Um, and that's a, more in the economic kind of area and, um, you know, the business world. But yeah, but I think you could define resources. You could know resources economically, but you could also know resources as like great people in your life. Human like, resources, yeah. yeah, great people in your life, a great life around you. And so in the process of acquiring those things, I think that's a pretty awesome definition. If I am fulfilled while in acquiring those things, that feels like a successful life. That feels successful to me. I, I don't need the bazillion dollars or, you know, all this, the glitz and the glam. And, and, you know, I think we're blessed in having experienced that at an early age to where it's like, okay, I know I don't need it. Because I, I got some homies who still think that it's just... I have to attain myself being on a bunch of screens yes. and people to love me. And, it's like, and thinking oh. once you get there, it'll all be solved. All, yeah, your, no. all your internal shit will be solved, yeah. Yeah. which we know. It's just not. We yeah. know it's just not. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can look at any actor and know it's not. We're yeah. all insane. So that's still. a bit of a privilege yeah. you know, we have. You know? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, take that L early so we don't <laughs> spend the entire bag at like you know 40 trying to reach this thing. Yeah. yeah worthless yeah it has been a weird journey uh trying to get back into that version of success for me because i mm. do want it not for fame reasons but because i don't know i'm still called to do it i want mm. to act i want to work with great people mm -hmm. i want to create fun impactful meaningful things i, I still love collaborating on sets i still love yeah. being on sets like i still have this like deep need to do that at a level that's bigger than I'm doing it now. Yeah. And it's it's definitely a, a difficult journey. And this is the journey of anyone in a creative field. Some people, you find what works for you in life to build your security mm -hmm. and you just do that routine. And then when you're not doing that routine, you live kind of the fun life that you want to live. You, you have friends, you party, you travel, and that's your routine. Like that's the quote unquote normal life, right? Like my sister lives it in Australia, but she lives that. It's like we work and then we kind of create our life from a job that we don't love, but it's all good. Mm -hmm. You know, she doesn't have like a big yeah. artistic vision for her life that she wants, right? And I see that and I go, that is one path. And that's a path a lot of people are on and it's dope. Mm -hmm. We're kind of on a different one. Like I have like a big vision for my life that I want to realize. Yeah. And every day I'm out of congruence with that. There's dissonance, it hurts, it's mm -hmm. uncomfortable. I sometimes internalize it. I feel doubt about myself or I feel doubt about the world or you know, it like creates this, this tension. But in that tension, yeah, that, that's, that's where the growth, you, yeah. that's where the creativity Keep comes from. Fire, yeah. yeah, when it's not like kicking my ass and making me depressed, you know? No, I mean, I hear it. <laughs> but I mean, even, dude, like, even like, you know, you talked about that, uh, like, like, we all need these certain catalysts to push us to um, further accolades. If, if, you know, you hadn't seen that zero on that bank account, and I'm saying you to yeah. detach myself from it, but it's happened to me several times as well. <laughs> Uh, even if it was just on one account, I'm like, oh, I got to pull this money from yeah. over here and put it on here. <laughs> make, make <laughs> there, it I'm fine. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I'm good for now. Uh, but um, but yeah, you need we need those little fires to catalyze something in us to make us be better. And, uh, you know, when you're in a, in a competitive field like entertainment, you do have to, you know, you have to continue to grow. Um, I had reached a point of stagnation, I felt like, mm. in... Um, in just the acting world and I was like I think I'm longing for something greater and I think it was more uh more of the directing the writing and the the editing some people like hate editing editing I, I freaking love it I hop on the Adobe Premiere After Effects and just get going and I can manifest these things that were we were just with a black sc blank screen you know yeah. and then I put all this these awesome motion graphics to help sell this whole story and move things along I love that um but uh I was at a point of stagnation um and this was when I had no real skills in filmmaking. You know, I, I I wasn't great at being a director of photography. I didn't really even know what any of that stuff was. But once I really started um, saying, okay, the acting thing, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break uh, and started finding other ways that I could propel myself in this entertainment industry, um, that really 
that really it, it really it really inspired me because that stagnation um, where, where you think, oh, things are just going to be handed to me because I've been this person on TV is just going to continue to roll. Um, not getting those uh, opportunities or getting those roles just handed to me made me say, hey, I got to figure out another way to maintain relevance, but also be fulfilled because I know I love entertainment, but I don't like sitting waiting for someone to call me and tell me that, hey, you booked the role because you walked in there and smiled at us. I felt like that was what my um, acting journey had become. So I'm like, I want, I want more and behind the scenes has just been awesome for me. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Not getting what you want in life is often the correct thing. <laughs> it's like it, it will then shift things yeah, for be you. Be better. Be better. You know, be undeniable. Because right now you're just the kid who has booked before. Mm. Be undeniable. Pick up these other skills. Mm. Hire yourself to be in a film. You know, mm. so whenever I do projects and I have that um, executive position, you know, I can do I can do kind of whatever I want. So I love manifesting things more so than the acting. Of course, it's a, just a joy of mine. But uh, I feel like stepping into the behind the scenes world now just opens up so many more possibilities uh, for me. So. Dude, it's so awesome. I think we've uh, f found a similar trajectory. Yeah, through the like waiting, it's just turned into me taking screenwriting classes and starting to write scripts and I directed and shot my first um, short last yeah. year and like yeah because I can't be waiting all the time and if I had been acting I might if I had been acting more I probably wouldn't be developing these other skills in filmmaking Which that, will that I love yes. and that I love that are like amazing it's so fun Keeps to do inspired man yeah and just building up communities like back to Scott Fellows like I loved what he did Matt Dearborn was the guy who worked with on uh, Disney he was our showrunner over there him and Tom Burkhardt but um th the fact that they knew so much about filmmaking and they brought a community of other people who love this art form and, you know, you got your gaffers with the light, you know, you got your grips and stuff. We're just rigging everything up. You, uh, you know, you got your cameraman, you know, uh, just all, all these different departments, the editing department, bringing these people together uh, and giving them an opportunity to showcase their skills in a big way and be compensated for it and feel fulfilled, like I said, which is a version of success. It's just something that I long to do. And I love doing it. I just shot this um, this music video, you know, Sean Two, Sean two yeah. Miles or whatever. Yeah. Uh, great, great producer, cat from Mississippi, just yeah. like me. Uh, he's got a song that's number one on KJLH uh, right now. We just got that news. Hey. It's called Favorite. Yeah, hey. guys, do the favorite challenge. All right. It's, it's I see you. Just play the song and... Just get your dance on. Yeah, yeah. Because I've been doing marketing for that too. So, yeah. you know, I've, I've opened up my horizons to where I'm not just that. I, I don't have to be in front of that camera. And it feels so good to bring people together, help them manifest their visions. Um, so I shot the video for that. Got to be on a yacht. That was you. freaking awesome. Shooting on a, on a yacht. There's like mega yacht too, man. Like you got to like walk for like five minutes. Then you finally make it to the bow of the ship. Like it's, it's amazing. Dope, man. Amazing. Awesome. I love this, man. It's awesome, dude. This is a good uh, look for you. I, I like it. it. And it just feels good bringing people together, knowing how sets should work. Because I, you can go to sets where it's just classist and cold. And I try to really have my sets to where I can get feedback from everybody. I'm a very egalitarian type of person. I'm mm -hmm. not authoritarian. Do it because I said so. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. I'm more of a director who's like, okay, what do you think? Okay, what's your perspective here? As long as you know you got that rim light hidden, you got the kick light on, everything just looks tasteful to me. I'm open to suggestions. And I, I just love communicating effectively with people. And sometimes I feel like that's a form of fellowshipping. And people can take that with them into their own lives. We just finished this shoot with... Um, this new artist, her name is Khadijah. I got a plug. I got a plug, man. Do um, it. Khadijah featuring Blueface. Blueface, um, yeah. you know, buzz down, Tatiana, yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it was just so great bringing all these people to, together from different backgrounds and just being an inspiring um, figure for them as they're expanding their careers. Like, I also just love seeing people in my shoes coming to a set for the first time. Like, I, I wrote scripts for the video and everything. Uh, the song is called Blue Racks. So you guys got to check it out. It's gonna be it's gonna be killing them um, going into this uh, first quarter after we finish this one, um, but just inspiring people with my craft, um, broadening their horizons. Um, these first time actors, I love getting them on set and almost seeing a little bit of myself in them when I first started. And you never know what that's gonna build for them as far as their new prospects and opportunities, like even Blueface being an actor in this music video, like giving him that opportunity to where it's not, he's not just rapping, you know, that might open him up to some, um, 
to some angles, you know, some positive angles for yeah. people. Like, cause some you other possibilities, man. You never know. You never know what people's options are, you know, and you know, yeah, yada yada. I love I, broadening people's horizons. I, I love it helped me so much. I love this, man. It's what I'm still obsessed about with being on sets and film and TV and and music videos. All this, it, it really at its best, it is a true collaborative community art. You are taking many different people with many different skills, creating something that's ultimately fun, even if it's a really serious project. Mm -hmm. There's a level of play and fun and creativity yeah. and spontaneity to it. Yeah. Um, you're all coming together to create this thing out of nothing, this thing that came out of someone's head. Yeah. Uh, use all your skills, work together on set, and try and keep it peaceful, fun, yeah. Uh, exciting, engaging, yeah. um, creatively stimulating, challenging, yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, create this piece of media to then be enjoyed by people and everyone makes a little bit of money and mm -hmm. like we're all happy at its best. I mean, it's, it's truly a collaborative um, business and art form yeah. uh, and it's why I'm still obsessed with it. Like sets are magical places. Really? Even when shit's like falling apart, I'm like, I love it here. I, I am not jaded about solving. it. Yes. The problem solving. It's man. constant problem solving. Mm -hmm. Especially for a director. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Directors <laughs> just being get given every Everybody's problem. Everybody's coming at you with, hey, yeah. this is happening. Oh, the lights just went out. Oh, you know, the owner of the house feels like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, street parking isn't working. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. There's so much of that, man. But yeah. Um, I, yeah. can't, I can't wait to get more into it, and I can't wait to see uh, more of what you do with it, man. Yes, man. This Blue Racks joint is going to drop on MTV BT. A uh, favorite is on MTV BT right now. Amazing. Like, like so. Yo, I love this because you've been doing this for a minute. You've been. been yeah, you've been, you've been, yeah. you had your gear and your little crew and you've been oh, yeah. directing Dude, I and producing. I used to just be behind the camera every, yeah. like literally right there, man. Get yeah. Get the big Ronin gimbal and Yeah, some people don't know, but Daniel and I like shot a little pilot. Oh yeah. Daniel and I yeah. created a project a couple years ago. It never went anywhere, but we, uh, we <laughs> it's, did, it's, it's great to it's this It's funny, day. man. It's the best it's, thing. It's Devin and Daniel <laughs> go to college. So yeah. like it was a mockumentary as if Daniel and I, we played kind of like caricature versions of ourselves, like after child acting, we're like 26 and the world is not going how we want it. And so we decide to go back to college together. So we're like the older guys in college, but also being humbled by life because we're kind of cocky about our childhood Past fame. Accomplishments. Yeah. No one cares though. Yeah. I was actually in college at the time. We shot it on my and we campus. Shot it at Cal your campus. Long Beach, yeah. Right? And man, it was funny. It was good. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we did that. Yeah. Maybe we'll, I put it up on like Instagram a while ago. Maybe we'll share that again. I'm going to chop it down into like some real format and just throw it up too. Might as well. Yeah. It was, it was fun, man. I really yeah. liked making that with you. And I that, we made that, a song for it too. That, yeah. That's song is killer. Yeah, we made the theme song. The theme That's song. right. Yeah. Yeah, because music's a whole other thing. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> before we go, uh, I want to yeah. ask you, life's big, right? Life's messy, a lot of noise. Obviously, we all see a lot of problems, a lot of struggles, all this stuff. Yeah. But what do you love about life? What do I love about life? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Life. You've you've already you've already touched on some things, but I just want to. What do I love about life? Mm -hmm. It's so lovable. <laughs> Dang this this thing that just it has always been with me, and I've never known anything other than it. Um, I love. You know, I love new experiences, man. Mm. Um, you know, so I'm gonna just keep it broad and in, in general. I love yeah. new experiences. Um, I love new experiences with new people. I love new experiences with old people who I enjoy having experiences with. Um, mm. and just the, the quest for knowledge. I mean, it's just something about us humans. We love, uh, just cultural transmission, you know, so that what I know, what I know tomorrow will help me be a better person than I was yesterday. So I just, I, I just love that quest for, uh, for knowledge um, with the goal of helping myself and my community awesome. in the coming, you know, days. So awesome. That's me. I so. love that, Daniel. Hey, I love that, Daniel. I yeah. love my family too. I just want to throw that out. <laughs> my mom, Cheryl Chapman and Lee, you are just the most awesome in the world. Nathaniel Lee. I love you so much. Uh, I, I love your family too. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try a thing on this podcast where we finish with essentials. 
the essentials. Okay. You you can expand on them or not. Okay. I'm just gonna ask you for your your essentials. Okay, three essentials. This is uh, let's call it your survival uh, toolkit. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, three essential books. Three essential books? This is the easiest way to make someone look like a complete idiot on a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I'm like, okay, three books. You don't have three favorite books? Well, The Giver. Okay. The Giver was, uh, you know, <laughs> The Giver was great. Um, now, let's see. What else? Let's let's try to be. <laughs> I love that. Be, I'm that. going back into, okay, when was the last time I read a book? It's all, it's all <laughs> it high is, school, you know, mandatory is, reading. It is a hard time for people with books. <laughs> Dude, yeah, YouTube kind of killed the book. Game, yeah, it kind of did. I get it. I, I do all my studying there. I'm like, okay. Noam Chomsky's wrote so many books in linguistics, but I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to watch your, your YouTube lectures, yeah. bro. Yeah, no, that's fair. I'm a very pragmatic guy. I, love, I, I don't necessarily read like fantasy and stuff yeah. like that. I'm always just listening for people just saying, hey, Life here's is hard, life. Yeah. and here is how you maneuver through it uh, efficiently. All right, three essential priorities in life. Three essential priorities. Uh, budgeting, just you just have to do it. It's not going anywhere. Um, uh, priorities, like I try to observe like healthy eating. It's tough, man, but you, you got to do it. It only gets bad, and then you have doctor bills and all that stuff. Da, da, da. Um... What would be my last priority? Budgeting, healthy eating, and dang. Can, let me say healthy eating and exercise. Let's lump them all together. Just health. And mm, choosing positive people to be around and maintaining a positive outlook on the world. Amazing. There we are. And finally, three essential practices, three essential parts of your routine Mm -hmm. for your life for well-being for uh hmm. a good life for a good life practices yeah. yeah yeah practices are parts of your routine yeah man like it's a daily routine or just in, yeah you know. yeah no however you want to define it i prioritize preparedness all right um preparedness and then scheduling Scheduling is something that you have to prioritize or your preparedness is just going to go out of the window. Um, yes. So preparedness, scheduling, and yeah, scheduling is the one. Um, <laughs> follow through. Follow through. Okay. You know, uh, yeah. It's not like I'm saying I wake up every day and do some mantra or something because I don't do that. Okay. Just preparedness, scheduling, and then. Okay. Uh, hey. I love it. What I learned in asking you the essentials is uh, I need to prep guests on the essentials. <laughs> oh, right. Because <laughs> I need to give them those. It's like, hey, think about these three things. Yeah. Um, it's cool. Maybe Jeff can edit out all the, the pausing time while you thought. Listen, nice. we're learning. First podcast episode. Uh, uh, Daniel, I love you, man. Bro, love you too, It's doc. great to see you. Bro, uh, thanks road. for being my first guest. Uh, yeah. I'm excited for our Ned's Rewatch pod. That's gonna also going to be dropping yeah. at a similar Stay time tuned, to this. Stay yeah. Um, it's all good, man. I, I am uh, I am thrilled to know you as long as I have and like kind of be able to look over and see where we're both at as adults yeah, in our learning and our growth and our yeah, progress. Yeah, you inspire me, dog. You inspire me. Likewise. Yeah, since, a, since a young age, bro. Likewise, man. It's, uh, yeah, it's a blessing to know you, man. Right back at you. Thanks for being here. Turn up. All right. Bye. Anami. Peace. Thanks for listening to that Anami podcast. Anami is a creator-led educational platform that teaches you the things you wished you learned in school so you can thrive in adulthood. Anami lessons are completely free and they're taught by some of your favorite creators from around the internet. Head to anami.co to start learning about things like budgeting, investing, taxes, how to thrive in your relationships, how to find your dream job, and so much more. That's anami.co. O-N-O-M-Y dot C-O. See you there.